I'm here with Jonathan Curran and we're going to discuss the Pajama Game, which is playing at the Shaftesbury Theatre until the 13th of September. Hello, Jonathan. How are you? Hello, Nick. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely fine, Good. yes. We saw this rather charming show last night and uh, I didn't know anything about it. I knew a couple of the songs. Well, Steam, Steam Heat is one of the more famous ones. Um, there's When a Man Loves a Woman, which is I, I knew as well. Yeah. You know a bit more about this piece than I do, don't you? Well, only because I'm so old that I can remember in the 50s, um, Edmund Hockeridge, who was a Canadian singer, um, had a hit over here. He was in the Pajama Game, the original production of it. At the Coliseum, was it? At the Coliseum, yes. A um, year and a half or something. Yeah, yeah, Which is yeah. a big, big, big... Yes, well over 2,000, 2,500, isn't it? Seats or something, I should think, for, for, for a year and a half, pretty good. He had a hit with Hey There, Hey There You With The Stars In Your Eyes, which is a great song. That was a huge hit and a huge hit in the States for Rosemary Clooney, I believe, at the same time. So there was Steam Heat, which was also a hit in the States, I gather, around that time. It's quite interesting that it was one of the last musicals to actually have songs that became hits in the top 20. In the in the in, in the in the pop charts, yeah. yes. What does Thos call it in the hit parade? In the <laughs> in the hit parade, then rock and roll came in, so everything changed after that. Well, well Steam Heat has a kind of rock and roll piano going. It on. does. I, I, I don't know that was added for this production. No, no, no. It always did do. It's a sort of um, it's a sort of uh, almost twelve bar bluesy sort of piece, isn't it? More interesting. More interesting. Uh, music and lyrics by Rich Dadler and Jerry Ross of uh, Damn Yankees fame. And one thing I didn't know is that Jerry Ross was 29 yeah. when this musical opened and he was also 29 when he died which is very sad and at that time he had the two biggest shows he had the number one show on Broadway and yeah. the number two show on Broadway so Absolutely. incredibly talented and and huge hits with with, with songs from both musicals yeah. uh, this is a, a, a production that has transferred from the Chichester Theatre a company that's giving us lots of big revivals recently Sweeney Todd singing in the rain just to name two and now the pyjama game starring Michael Xavier and the wonderful Joanna Ryder we didn't get to see Michael last night, which was a shame, but the guy we had on, uh, under the name of Dan Burton, was, was very, very good indeed. He was excellent, a lovely Sid. voice. Yeah, yes. No, he, 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 he was great. He was absolutely terrific. Michael Xavier actually didn't do it in Chichester. I can't remember who did, but Joanna Riding has been in it you know all, all the way through so story is boy meets girl and a bit of Romeo and Juliet going on you know they're from opposite sides of this pajama factory they yeah. they want to uh, the, the girl is a worker there and she wants to they want seven and a half cents pay rise and in fact the musical was based on a novel called, called seven and a half cents yes, by Richard Bissell yeah. um, who also did the book with George Abbott for this musical obviously there's a couple of lines in this musical that did kind of work in the modern day audience today with lots of things about you know government unrest and lots of you know there's no money and all that kind of stuff going on so yeah. it's a good time for this musical to be playing yeah and um cooking the books from the uh, owner of the factory as well <laughs> that came into People it not paying tax and stuff all like that. that sort of stuff and um, a, a very charming story they fall in love incredibly quickly and there's no reason but that's why I mean, you know it is young people in love which I think yeah. whilst Joanna Riding is amazing and the triple threat she's a bit old for this well, role actually, she's not funny enough because um, I was looking this up as well she actually is supposed to be 45 what the character yeah oh, okay because I, I, I was under the impression they were teenagers no, so was I but then um, I realised no no and I take it, that back she's exactly the perfect age for this <laughs> then yes. Michael Xavier is very young so Yes, but I'm not sure whether um, he actually is in the in, in the book. I don't I don't know about that. Maybe he falls for the older the the, uh, the cougar effect. Or I have to say, Joanna Riding is, is is amazing. I mean, she really is a triple threat, isn't she? Uh, last seen far too briefly in Stephen Ward, where she comes on, and sings a Lloyd Webber ballad, and buggers off essentially. Um, mm -hmm. Big cast for this show, big orchestra. Yeah, very good orchestra, very good band, very well arranged dance, and 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 Gareth Valentine's done a wonderful job with the dance arrangements, hasn't he? And a, a, a very exuberant band, very talented band, and even one of the um, orchestra coming out to play trumpet on stage in Hernandez, Hernandez Hideaway. Ole. I had a couple of issues with the sound as regards miking of the. I agree. Uh, the cast. 
one point when they do a wonderful, you know, four minute dance break and then they expected to sing in chorus and they were so out of breath you couldn't. They're very breathy in their in their tone. There have been problems with the sound. I was reading some press about this and a lot of them said that, that it's a pity the sound very often that the band were louder than you know, were too loud for the uh, for, for the chorus but it didn't worry me too much and there's some dreadful synthesized strings at one point well i'm yes i'm it's, it's just a, yeah it's a shame but of course we can't afford real strings in these days richard Eyre is directing this show uh going back to stephen ward he did that as well yes. and stephen Meir choreographing yes. uh, the choreography is amazing it's in, wonderful in it's show. absolutely wonderful elements of um west side story as well in it but i mean the the, the actual energy of, of the cast is just absolutely wonderful you're just full of you know it's just so joyful and life enhancing and brilliant the song i was most disappointed with sadly was steam heat yes although um you, you i remember you saying nick last night that you know what a pity there are only three people in it but actually it has always been only three people in it well it needs more <laughs> and i know we have the steam rising up from the stage and, and lots yes. of fun stuff like that quite loud yes just would it be nice to have Maybe six people doing it. I know, but unfortunately, it doesn't have that. But um, interesting how Fosse was the choreographer of yes. Steam Heat, and it immediately reminded me of um, of the psych- uh, Sweet Charity. And Shirley MacLaine has been involved with this musical as well. Shirley MacLaine understudied the girl who played it in, in, in the original in, in America, and she went on once. She hadn't had a wrestle with anybody and went on and um, absolutely blew everybody away and then... A movie deal got a movie deal five, five a five year deal with something like Paramount or one of those yeah it's like early X Factor listeners yes quite and you're probably more talented yes wonderful wonderful songs in this show and the, the music is, is, is good and you made a very interesting comment that Jonathan last night they just don't write it like this anymore do you think that's because it's the old-fashioned sound that you like that obviously people aren't, you know, able to emulate? But in it. Well, I'm not even sure about that because there were a lot of young people in the audience last night, which I was quite surprised about, and they were absolutely loving it too. I, th- I you know, I mean, I, I don't think you can get away with writing tunes like that anymore. I just don't think it would work unless you were deliberately doing a pastiche of something. Because back then it wasn't pastiche, it was no, the exactly. pop music, wasn't it? Well it wasn't the pop music, it was just um it they were they were just good songs written for the for the musicals, but then people caught on to them because in those days people would whistle them and hum them in the streets. The old grey whistle test, of course. Well yes, quiet. Do you know why it's called the old grey whistle test? Uh I think I did, but I can't remember. Do enlighten me, Nick. Uh well they used to get old biddies to go into the the offices and they would um, play them these tunes and if the old grey people right. could whistle them yeah. that was the old grey whistle oh, test oh how did you learn that I just know everything oh my god a fountain of knowledge apart from the stuff I don't know <laughs> which is a lot a word of warning to those if to those taller than five foot three oh, the theatre yes we have to review the theatre here the Shaftesbury is, is a lovely theatre it, it's sort of but not doomed to, but not to watch a show in no. it is the most uncomfortable I mean I am six foot four but you know for anybody over I should think five foot eight it's the most there's no leg room at all unless well, there's you, one row there's one row which we managed to get and they're 97 seated. pounds these mm. seats it's like an airline Yes, it is. Someone was saying that you're paying... Oh, yes, it was one of the reviews said you're paying a premium first-class, a business-class um, fair, uh, fairs for economy seats, which is absolutely true. And this was in one of the papers. It's appalling. Yeah. Recent news that Cameron McIntosh has bought lots of... Uh, a couple more theatres. He's going to name the ambassadors the Stephen Sondheim Theatre, which is a big... Yeah. kick up the arse for the ambassadors group ironically um, and also he's bought the Victoria Palace where Billy Elliot will they have said will play for another year and a half to two years before Cameron completely rips it up and tears it apart and rebuilds it Cameron if you're listening and I sincerely hope you are buy this theatre and redo it please <laughs> and you said a really interesting comment last night Jonathan you feel sorry for the actors because the audience are in discomfort yes and I think if you're in discomfort it's terribly hard to really 100% concentrate on what's going on stage because you're continually thinking oh my god I'm blocking the view of someone behind because the sight lines aren't very good either there were two girls who we swapped seats with in fact who obviously had shorter legs than we did but they had better sight lines because before they were sitting at the back with tall people in front of them they couldn't see a thing and I think it's very very difficult um, to, to really engage 100% if you are uncomfortable 
but it wasn't too uncomfortable because it's a it's a jolly entertaining show. Oh, it's a wonderful show, and um, it, you, you realise how well these shows are constructed. These old book shows are constructed, didn't you think, Nick? Yeah, and one more interesting thing: a, a role has been taken over recently. Uh, the role of Vernon Hines, mm. and he plays other roles as well, um, was originally played by Peter Polycarpu and is now being picked up by the very talented, very funny Gary Wilmot. Yes, Gary um, took over uh, the night before, I think. We saw his second night, and he was absolutely fantastic. I mean, he always is. He's a very, very talented actor, and I'm, I, I was thrilled. And special credit as well to Alexis Owen Hobbs, the wonderful eight-foot-three blonde person playing uh, Gladys, the secretary to has there. She, yeah, she um, was absolutely brilliant. Wonderful dancing and very funny. She gets funny. the best songs in the show, in a way. She, she does, and and also she's very, very funny when she plays drunk in in Hernandez Hideaway. One, one one bit, one bit especially. With her head. When she goes for a nap. <laughs> Pajama game, I hope it does well, are playing to the 13th of September. So do I. There are lots of deals, so do go and see it at the Shaftesbury Theatre and have a lovely time. Let us know what you think on Twitter. Thank you, Jonathan. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.